attention. Americans have the freedom of choice, and your choice for professional wrestling should be the American Wrestling Federation. wrestling action tonight a very special announcement from awf president paul alperstein my name is mick Karsh, and i am terry taylor we're gonna see you in action gentlemen chris adams break the hammer valentine with his manager rico suave bob orton jr with his manager sir oliver humperdinck and we're also gonna see a great new young upcoming wrestler johnny gunn to the ring we go with billy anderson ladies and gentlemen this contest is scheduled for three rounds introducing first from Newport Beach, California, weighing 222 pounds, Bobby Bradley. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as we see Bobby Bradley, welcome to this edition of the American um, Wrestling Federation, the fastest growing wrestling promotion in the world. The popularity increases each and every week. And one of the reasons why is the man you're about to see right now from Stratford on Avon, England, gentlemen, Chris Adams. Yeah, and everybody in this building on their feet showing their appreciation of the talents of gentleman Chris Adams dressed in his best Sergeant Pepper outfit. Well, this is one tremendous wrestler, and before we call the action in this one, I don't even know why I'm asking you, but do you have any idea what the announcement will be from Paul Alperstein? Of course I do. This time I actually Wait, do know. You and, what? And I'm going to tell you, if you shut up for a second. I can't believe it. He's going to announce the pairings for the first ever American Wrestling Federation Championship tourney this week. And the other half is the tournament starts next week, right here on television. Well, that's a tremendous announcement indeed, but I have to ask you, how did you find out? I've been asking you for weeks. You haven't told oh. me a thing. Who told you? Who clued you in? Alperstein, I got the hotline. Oh, and speaking of a hotline, there's a hot clothesline that sends Bobby Bradley over the top. Chris Adams is gonna follow up. No, Bradley just got out of the way. I don't blame him. That Chris Adams spent some time over in Japan. You know, he started in England where the round system was originated. Bobby Bradley from the American style, ooh, took advantage of a the situation there. And Chris Adams, great wrestler, been to Japan, and he's gotta be one of the favorites in that pairing coming up for that tournament. Well, no question about it as Bobby Bradley mounts that top row. Ooh. Adams drills him to the solar plexus. He's got him in a tough sh way right now, halfway across the ring. Yeah, better to go that way than backwards. Bobby Bradley looked like he's going to teeter either way. Both men pulling out all stops, going up to the top rope. Very risky and very easy to get injured. Very high-risk maneuver on the part of gentleman Chris Adams. Bradley gets to his feet. Adams with that clothesline from the top. Boy, he clotheslined him over the top rope, followed up with another clothesline. There's a method to this Englishman's madness. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're new to the American Wrestling Federation, once again, three four-minute rounds to determine a winner. Sleeper! Adams has him in the sleeper hold. Takes yeah. him down to the canvas. If there's no winner, at yeah. the end of the three rounds, Terry, the referee then becomes very instrumental. Yeah. yeah, he'll have a card to judge who's ahead on each round, and he will determine the, the winner. Job, there man. are no draws here. There has to be a winner. Also, the rules are over the top rope is a disqualification. If you touch the referee, and if it was Billy Silverman, why would you want to? Disqualification. Outside interference. Disqualification. And the ref's discretion is final. And there's a look at part of the great crowd on hand once again. The popularity of the American Wrestling Federation growing by leaps and bounds every week. Look at this. Oh! Well, Bradley sought the safety of the ring ropes, and Adams, I guess, deposited them not too gently onto the canvas. Uh-oh. He went for one move. Looks like he's going for a pop. Oh, he, he got it. He nailed him there. 
That move has been outlawed in more organizations because of the danger involved, head and neck trauma. It's legal here. Zapperstein said almost anything goes within the rules. Elperstein. That's what I said. Pick by. Oh. oh, no, he missed with a knee. He jammed that knee. Bob Bradley with a little possum there. And Chris Adams is in trouble right now. Look at Bradley. He is on the assault, following up, going after that knee. I'm on a low assault diet myself, but he's got to be in that half Boston crab after a pile driver. He must have shrugged those shoulders up pretty good to make sure that he didn't get hit as hard as we thought he did. Incredible well, tenacity or resiliency by Bobby Bradley. This would be a tremendous upset if Bob Bradley scores the victory over gentleman Chris Adams. Now, I'm not sure if Bradley is in his mind keeping track. Once again, the round system comes so much into play, and we are down to a half a minute now. Can he follow up? Well, he's doing the right thing. He's taking out the wheel. Oh, hyperextension on the knee. Mm. He's working that leg over. Adams has got to make sure he doesn't pin himself, and he must make sure he does not submit. Can he hang on for 14 seconds? Oh, he drilled him right to the side of the hand. Flat of the foot's legal. Now we're under 10, we're at eight seconds now. This round drawing to a conclusion as Bradley apparently content just to work over the knee, the ankle of Chris Adams. And that's the end of the first round. And I have to say, I'm very surprised at the offense being shown by Bob Bradley. I'm telling you, this Bob Bradley is an up and coming young wrestler. Look at this guy. He is in there with a true superstar in the form of Chris Adams. Speaking of form, oh, hey. sorry, what was I talking about? And then he's over there on the top rope, waving to the blonde babe at ringside. Well, Chris Adams. Adams actually uh, thrilled with him. Yeah, Chris Adams had a little trouble with that leg, choosing not to sit down and take a break. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, the one-minute rest period between rounds here in the American Wrestling Federation, and Bob Bradley staying at least somewhere in the vicinity of a neutral corner here as the referee keeps the two combatants apart as we get ready for the second round. Tremendous action early on. Yeah, and I'm telling you, it is, it's unbelievable at the American Wrestling Federation. These guys have picked up on it this quick. Oh, he went for that single leg, but you cannot just turn this off when you're in there fighting for your life. Just have that bell ring and stop, and these guys have done it. Unbelievable. And now he takes Ooh. it to the outside of the ring. He wraps that knee around the post, and Bob Bradley is showing no signs of letting up here now. Oh, he kick, he's kicking Chris. Oh, in Missouri! In Missouri, a Japanese move when the guy's got that leg you whip that leg around made famous by Antonio Inoki Chris Adams has done his homework well he caught Bradley right to the back of the head and then there's that forearm legal the jaw and a second shot Adams turning it on right now whipped oh he was in orbit big back body drop yeah Chris Adams right now is giving us the high side Bradley can't even get up he's got a great finishing maneuver bang oh no you saw it right there flat of the foot legal on the face hey bradley is out what a comeback by gentleman chris adams bob bradley perhaps owned that first round but here in the second round the gentleman from stratford on avon england tremendously impressive and with that tournament coming up those pairings being drawn this has to be one of the favorites yeah he really came through when he when he looked like he was down Chris Adams pulled it out. He's favoring that leg. Great, great win by Chris Adams. Right there, you see that monkey flip. Tremendous strength in the legs. Throws over Bradley. Bradley doesn't want to go backwards, so bang. Three quarters of the way across the ring. Tremendous impact. Watch this lariat. Bang. Arm hits him first right to chin. I can't believe that didn't beat Bradley. In Missouri kick. Man, do I do my homework to know all these Oh, moves. you do. You sure and do. Adams right here with the super kick. Yeah. Oh. That is the finish. Unbelievable. He caught him right to the jaw. All right, everybody. Let's send it to our friend, Ken Resnick. He's caught up with gentleman Chris Adams. There you saw him in action once again, gentleman Chris Adams. And it's very interesting. Chris is becoming one of the most popular wrestlers here in the AWF. He's always been popular with the fans. But, Chris, you're the most popular man here with the other wrestlers with your experience. Every time I turn around, another wrestler is coming to you to sit down and talk about various ways to use the round system to their advantage. Well, they are. You know, the round system, like I say, it's European. It's my style of wrestling. I absolutely love it. You know, I've said before, and I'm going to say it again, the AWF has everything that Chris Adams wants. Real wrestling, real wrestlers, and the round system. Now, you know, one thing that you don't do is you don't finish a round 
go to the corner, sit on the stall, and drink three <laughs> gallons of water. You just don't do that, you know? Your he, opponent found that out. Exactly, and I think that's the problem. Uh, you know, that's the problem he made. He lost the bout because of it. But it doesn't matter, because I know my work's cut out. I'm looking forward to the tournament. I hope I am part of it. All right, everybody, the hard-hitting action of the American Wrestling Federation Ladies continues. What do you think of that gentleman, Chris Adams? He has to be one of the favorites in that tournament. What a, what a superstar. Yeah, he's incredible. He's wonderful. He's hot. He's great. He's a 10. Who's Jimmy V? Yeah, I love Jimmy V. V for victory. See how he's got his arms up in a V? I saw that. Well, you are taking a look at a young man who has captured the imagination and the fancy of virtually every female wrestling fan watching the American Wrestling Federation. The cards, the letters, the phone calls coming into the offices of the American Wrestling Federation. How can we call this guy? Is he married? Is he single? Can we have a date with him? No, that's not you I'm talking about. Johnny Gunn. Yeah, I know. He's got the girls after him. He's got money. He's got a good body. I'm not talking about Gary Gronke. I'm talking about Johnny Gunn. He's a great young wrestler, and all the babes love him, which makes me hate him. Yeah, my grandmother called the other day. I thought she was calling to ask how I was doing. She called to ask how she could get in touch with Johnny Gunn. Man, well, they certainly do love him, and I know he's received an invitation. I guarantee he has sent back the acceptance to participate in the tournament. Whether or not he'll be one of the lucky 16 remains to be seen. But what about you? Did you send back, did you ever receive an invitation? Uh, no, I didn't, but Alperstein said it was in the mail, so I hardly trust him along with my check. <laughs> it's in the mail. All right, let's take a look at Johnny Gunn. This man tremendously conditioned. He takes his body and this sport very, very seriously, spends hours in the gym. He's a student of the wrestling profession, and again, the name of the game in the American Wrestling Federation is wrestling, and he caught an elbow right to the side of the, of the jaw, over the top. Boy, look at this movement. Great agility by the big oh. man. What a hip lock, takes over Jimmy V. Great movement. Oh, cross, cross body. body. Woo! Kind of one, two. How did Jimmy V kick out of that car? Shh. I have no idea. He's giving up such a tremendous amount of size. Wow. And oh, he landed right on his head. He fell on his head outside the ring. And young Jimmy V is in a world of hurt right now, courtesy of Johnny Gunn. I'm very impressed with the high impact maneuvers that Johnny Gunn has. Uh-oh, his throws gets some momentum. Oh. No, that wasn't. Johnny Ben sliding into home plate. I'll tell you something, Jimmy V has been bounced around like a ping pong ball here, and I'm surprised that that young man is still in one piece. Johnny Gunn gets the capacity crowd here with the American Wrestling Federation all fired up. Uh-oh, slingshot, oh. bang. Halfway into the ring, Johnny Gunn firing up. He's got this kid on his bicycle, and he's aggressive as I've ever seen him. You know, Terry, we mentioned, ooh, just a minute. He backs Johnny Gunn into the corner, and now Jimmy V mounts a little offense of his own with those chops. They don't appear, appear to be very effective. Oh, they are not. Oh, but that one is. You talk about a couple of broken blood vessels across the chest, maybe a cracked sternum. Boy, I like the aggressiveness in this Johnny Gunn, and he's peaking it just right because the drawings are this week, the tournament starts next week. If he's in the first round next week, if he makes it, somebody's going to be looking at him right now going, man, is this guy ready? And then, you know, talking about that tournament, the matches, everyone will be seen on television, courtesy of Paul Alperstein and the American Wrestling Federation. Mark your calendars, tune in every week. Don't miss it. I think we're going to have to do something here. You got a towel? Give it to me so I can throw it in for Jimmy V. This kid is getting murdered. House Quake! Oh, nailed it. That has got to be it. Jimmy V, good night, my friend. A tremendously impressive victory for Johnny Gunn, and what a response from the fans in attendance. Man, he annihilated Jimmy V, a game young competitor, not in the same league with Johnny Gunn.
Wow, what a victory. Whoever's in the first round against him, if he's in there, he's got the work cut out for him. All right, here's the slow mode. Tremendous agility leaping over his man. Hip lock, look at the hip rotate, throwing this kid all the way across the ring. Jimmy V shows the impact. Up he goes. Now, this looks like it's going to be a body slam. Now, watch. Fall away slam. Well executed. Now he slingshots it into the ring. Unbelievable move. Bang. Johnny Gunn looks fantastic. And I don't know who's going to beat this guy. Right there, we see the slide. I mean, how many great offensive moves are we going to see out of this kid? And right there, his move to House Quake. Well, tremendous victory for Johnny Gunn. And right now, ladies and gentlemen, another star here in the American Wrestling Federation. Let's turn to Ken Resnick. He is caught up with Hercules. Take it away, Ken Resnick. I'm with Sheik Adnan El Casey and one member of his legion, Hercules. But before we get Hercules' thoughts on this upcoming tournament, Sheik, I'm just wondering, knowing you throw your money around like a handful of glue, have you paid uh, Mr. Hughes' fine as of yet? Well, it is not your business. Are you writing a book? Only thing I want to know, and only thing is concern me right now, I want to know my man, Hercules. Is he in the tournament? No one knows. President Paul Alperstein will be drawing the 16 names later on in this hour. You know, you're starting to get me mad, man. How are you going to find out? Find out right now. All you got to do is pick up the phone, call somebody. Why don't you holler out here? What's Mr. Epperstein's problem? Why can't he figure it out? He hasn't come drawn on the names yet. It'll be drawn out of a barrel, and the 16 names will be in the tournament. I tell you why he's not. Because they're scared of him. Because he will win the championship for the American Wrestling Federation. And I'm going to pay him so much money. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Well, that is a very confident pair, Sheik Adnan LKC and Hercules. You know, I have to wonder if Sheik has not yet paid the fine for Mr. Hughes. Does that mean Hughes cannot be considered for the tournament? Use your noodle, would you, Karst? That's, of course, what it means. You got Ronnie Vegas in here with the second best body in the ring right behind Jesse Hernandez, the referee. Billy Anderson talking about Rico and who else? Take a look. Toughest men, pound for pound. He pounds everybody. Look at this. Rico Suave said, he told me to tell you, next time you knock him in his size, he can stand on his wallet and see your bald spot. I have no question about that. The man is absolutely loaded with money. And in the person of Greg the Hammer Valentine, he may just have another find that'll take him right to the top of the American Wrestling Federation. You know Valentine very well. He has been in this sport for more than just a year or two. And everywhere that he has appeared, he's left a trail of broken bodies in his way. Speaking of breaks, let's take one now. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with the American Wrestling Federation and a look at Greg the Hammer Valentine managed by Rico Suave. Yeah, Ronnie Vegas telling Suave, get out of here so I can commence to attacking. He knows the importance of this match, and he knows Suave will stoop at nothing to get Valentine a win. No question about it, one of the great superstars in the history, Greg Valentine. Yeah, he is. Ooh, bushwhacked from behind by Valentine. Why not? Suave took the guy's attention. And boy, Valentine right now doing what he does best, hammering people. He's an incredible athlete. He's a rough, tough guy. And speaking of rough, tough guys, here comes my favorite part of the whole show. Why don't we go right now to a Warrior Corner? <laughs> so I hear there's a tournament coming to town. The American Wrestling Federation. Well, you better be mad enough to put the Warlord in it. Because when it's all said and done, the Warlord will be the next champion. And everyone will find out just what the Warlord is all about. <laughs> 
Well, a monster indeed in the person of the Warlord, and regarding that tournament, I still have to question. We know that Nails finally paid his fine. He's eligible to be a part of the drawing, but what about Mr. Hughes? What about Ron Powers? If they don't pay up, they don't even have a chance of participating. Yeah, and you gotta figure, you gotta be smart long-term, pay those fines. Oh, oh my gosh! Oh no! He went to take him over to bottom wrist lock, and Ronnie Vegas just blasted his face into the mat. You can see him checking to see if his teeth are there. Valentine's got that arm, but this kid's face right now is a mess. Well, he dropped him. That looked like a watermelon hitting cement, and I'm surprised that we don't have a jigsaw puzzle in place of a head with Ronnie Vegas. Greg the Hammer Valentine, methodical, devastating, and everything is high impact. Yeah, it's kind of hard to believe that when you take a guy over to bottom wrist lock, you've just pile driven him. Vegas, everybody talks about being able to take falls and protecting yourself. Well, right there, that was a perfect example that it doesn't always go that way. And even professionals in this sport make mistakes and get their faces smashed like that. Oh, Valentine blocked the kick. He saw it coming from Vegas, trying to fight his way out of the corner. Delivers the elbow in a second to the top of the noggin of Greg Valentine and a third. Give Ronnie Vegas credit here. He is battling with all his heart here against the hammer, Greg Valentine. Yeah, but he's dazed. He doesn't have a whole lot on any one of those shots. He's got Valentine. Oh, man. I honestly think his eyes are teared up, and he can't really see well, and Valentine stepped aside. And certainly Rico Suave very happy to have Greg the Hammer Valentine in his camp. He sees gold when he looks at the hammer. And he is now berating Ronnie Vegas, who has already taken uh, enough of a beating in that ring. He doesn't need the verbal abuse besides. This right here is Greg Valentine inflicting the maximum amount of punishment on a young man that he can. He's had this kid's face smashed in. He had him in the turnbuckle. I think he could have gotten the figure four and got a submission. But instead, he is sending a message out to everybody else that's trying to get into that tournament. How would you like that? or to bring that home to mother what we just saw there on the screen Rico Suave. I don't want to scare the dog no thanks again Ronnie Vegas ineffectual with those punches and what a chop by Greg Valentine the hammer snap mare to the canvas he measures Ronnie Vegas all oh, that time Vegas rolled out of the way he missed the leg drop as we are down to 25 seconds in this round yeah, I thought Ronnie Vegas might try to follow up, but oh man, brain buster there by Valentine. See, this is his move. He'll hit the guy. Uh, yeah, got the legs up, helpless position. He's got 11 seconds, 10. If he's going to get that figure four, he's going to have to hurry up. Oh, he's not going to get it. Vegas survived round one. Well, perhaps Greg the Hammer Valentine was aware of the time frame there. And now, come on, Valentine. This run has come to an end. The referee is making it very clear to Valentine, release that hold right now and get to the neutral corner. Oh, he wanted to apply that figure four in the worst way, but time ran out. And again, how many times we've said it in the American Wrestling Federation, that round system comes into play so often. I want you to finish this bomb real fast. Oh, good. That's okay, finish him. Fast, okay, we got no time to be sweating over a He's over like this. Beat. He's a beat man. He's Unbelievable beat man. camera work. We're right there in the ring. You can hear everything they're saying. He's a hurt man. He's right. Valentine has dished out a lot of punishment. Look at Vegas. He can barely sit in the corner, let alone stand. And right there, Les, the corner man, squirted with the water bottle that he's there giving Valentine for his own comfort. Well, Valentine has no friends in the wrestling business outside of the ones that he picks and chooses at any given moment. And unfortunately, right now, Suave may come into that category. But look at this now. Greg Valentine, the veteran that he is, did not give Ronnie Vegas a chance to get out of the corner. He's back in with those heavy shots. Yeah, bottom line is Ronnie Vegas trying to help, trying to support that knee and protect it. Valentine sees that, chops him in the chest. Cover the chest, go back to the leg. Cover the leg, you get hit in the head. This guy mauls you like, um, it's just unbelievable. He's a steamroller with legs. Off the top with that elbow, dropped Ronnie Vegas. And I have to agree with you, Terry. I think from earlier on, when Vegas' has head went into the canvas with that high impact, he hasn't been the same. He's been glassy-eyed ever since. Well, I'd have to agree with you. And Valentine, I mean, 
He's he in the hair. He's the tortoise. He's like a, tra a tractor running into a tree. Not a lot of impact. It just keeps going and going and going. And Ronnie Vegas, I hate to say it, if I had a towel, I'd throw it in for the guy because I think he has a future. And if he keeps going like this, he may not. Well, look at him again. Roddy Vegas, you talk about heart and tenacity and staying power. Now the referee admonishing Suave, telling him to stay out of the way. Roddy Vegas is fighting with everything he has to get out of the corner, and he's done it. Whips him almost all the way across the ring, but the knee gave out. And you know what that means? That's like a shark oh. smelling blood. Valentine loves to put guys in that figure four. Yeah, I mean, it was almost like putting an ace bandage on it or a big red X. Come get it. Instant submission. Well, Ronnie Vegas appeared to be mounting at least a little bit. He won't let offense. it go, Mick. He won't let it go. He's trying to break his leg. It's Suave, get out of the ring. Come on, Hernandez. Do something about this. President Paul Alperstein certainly is going to take a close look at what's going on in the ring right now. Losing a match, getting your shoulders pinned to the canvas is one thing. <laughs> Ronnie Vegas right here is going to be in the emergency room getting checked out. His face, chest, knees, everything. This guy's been beat up bad. Right here, Valentine standing on the second rope. He comes off with that elbow. See it jam the neck down flat on the back. Unbelievable the way Valentine just pounds and pounds and pounds. Back souffle, back of the head takes another tremendous percussion. And then Valentine in no hurry to get up. Maris is, see how he twists that neck and the body has to follow. I'd like to do that to you one time, Resnick. Now watch this. Boom! Oh, right, right on, on the face. Oh. And I'd like to try that to you too because I think it improved your looks. You. And right there, the figure four. Well, this was a methodical pounding on the part of Greg the Hammer Valentine. All right, everybody, let's throw it to our good friend, Ken Resnick, standing by in the interview area. Here's Ken. What a match. With a very pleased, luscious Tommy Rich, another big win for your family member, Greg the Hammer Valentine. When you got a brain like Rico and you got two wrestling machines like the Hammer and Luscious Tommy, you know things have got to go your way. You know, I hear a little later in the show, they're having the big drawing to see what the parents is going to be in the tournament. Well, like I said before, you know, there's a little talk about your name might not get drawn. Well, like I said, Rico got a lot of scratch. And you know, money talks. And Hammer, well, you my trying son to say that President and Paul Alperstein were under the table? No, and... no, 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 no. I didn't say that. I said Rico got money and money talks. And we will be in that tournament. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Well, I don't know about that double meaning there, but Rico Suave, a lot of people wondering what's going to happen if one of your two family members doesn't make it in the tournament. I'd be very upset. I'd be very upset because we're going to be cheating the fans of the American Wrestling Federation out of two of the greatest wrestling technicians in the world today. And you know something? It, it ain't going to happen. Let's not even talk. Why do you, why do you want to aggravate me like that, Resnick? It's a very strong possibility. Greg the Hammer Valentine, the talk is a championship match could go up to 12 rounds, something to be very unusual. Your thoughts on that? Well, I'll tell you what, 12 rounds... That would be fine for me. I like long matches, and I thrive on competition. And just this match I just had right now, that was just a, merely a warm-up for Greg the Hammer Valentine. Like I said before, the man wasn't even in my caliber, and I hammered him down, and I put that awesome figure four leg lock, the greatest hold of professional wrestling today. Nobody, once that figure four is locked on, can get out of it. That's why it's called a lock. And I'm the man that has the key. And I have the key to winning the championship of the American Wrestling Federation. If not me, this man right here, let's just tell me, Rich, because the family is going all the way to the top. Remember that drawing still to come. All right, ladies and gentlemen, coming up after this matchup, the drawings finally. The 16 participants in the tournament to determine the first ever champion of the American Wrestling Federation. And I can't wait. You've been waiting anticipating. I can't wait. This is a very historic moment in professional wrestling with the tournament draw. And one man who I know hopes dearly that they his name is drawn as a participant is the man that we're going to see right now. <laughs> Not Sir Oliver Humperdy. I'm talking about Cowboy Bob Orton Jr. out of Kansas City. And ladies and gentlemen, I cannot urge you strongly enough. Do not go away. 
Again, Terry, this is absolutely historic. Everybody is geared up for this. The excitement is in the air. Yeah, and I guess so, because there you have a great competitor, second generation, Bob Wood Jr. going against Bobby Joe Eaton or Billy Joe Eaton. He's a good-looking young kid, but I mean, there's a lot of experience on the other side of the ring and a lot of guidance in the red-headed troll. Well, Sir Oliver Humperdinck certainly no stranger to the wrestling profession. He has managed champions over the years, and I know in talking to him earlier on, he says if Bob Orton is lucky enough to get his name drawn as one of the participants, he guarantees the championship gold will be around his waist. And maybe so. Billy Joe Eaton in those long, put your cut like tights in the red. Both men in red. Orton tries for a hip lock. Oh, man, blocked once, but you see that leverage, gets that hip down, shoots it in, and takes over the younger, more experienced Eaton. You know, in this days of huge professional wrestlers, certainly the 300, 320 pounder, more commonplace than ever before, you take a look at a guy like Cowboy Bob Orton Jr., very tall and lanky, but not an ounce of body fat and a tremendous athlete. He's got a tendon strength that you can't believe until you felt it. He grabs you, uses your momentum against you, and knows how to use those long, ropey-like arms and legs. And I'm telling you, those long guys that are quiet like him, with the long arms and legs, you got to keep an eye on them, because he's got an attitude. Oh. Yep, I got that attitude. Well, that was absolutely insulting. I think it was more psychological warfare than to inflict some physical damage. And now, uh -oh. Billy Joe Eaton following Martin outside the ring, and the foot race is on. Boy, I love that fire by that young man. Off the ropes oh, and over that. the top. Nice hook off. Oh, and a beauty. Into that deep underhook, the arm drag. And a second one. And Billy Joe Eaton has Orton backpedaling underneath that bottom rope and onto the floor. Ah, I love it. The veteran bit around the block. Humphrey going, what are you going on? Yeah. Billy Joe Eaton on fire. I love to see the enthusiasm of young guys like me. Well, Oliver Humperdinck is trying to get Bob Orton down to a semblance of sanity here as the veteran is losing it a little bit. Billy Joe Eaton with a series of offensive maneuvers caught the Kansas City madman by storm. And now Orton going to slow down the pace a little bit. Ooh, ooh, caught him. Oh. Caught him once again. Perfectly legal. Mm. High I, impact. Yeah, out of that lockup when a guy is expecting you to go back to the arm, Orton hits him with that forearm, then hits him with a lifter. Great, just putting his offensive moves together. Looping right hand block. I love this kid's a desire. See he, Orton lean on him, though. You see him lean into the punch. You betcha. Oh, that knee. I don't know if he caught him with a hit or right under the jaw, but in either case, it did considerable damage. The prefrontal load. Oh, this looks like the pile driver. His dad made this famous. Oh. Many wrestlers. Oh, please don't let this be the end of Eaton's career. Very dangerous move. Count of one and two, and that's oh, it. Man. A very game. Bobby Joe Eaton hung in there as long as he could. Get out of there, Humperdinck. Billy Joe. Billy Joe, I'm sorry. I've got Bob Orton and Billy Joe Eaton in there. He hung in there as long as he could, but in the end, the experience of Cowboy Bob Orton Jr. too much for Mr. Eaton. Look at Humperdinck stepping on the guy. Humperdinck, most athletic thing he's ever done is eating breakfast. All right, let's go to that instant replay, man. Thank you, Eddie, in the booth. Right there, forearm to the side of the head, completely legal and very, very deadly. And here you see the way he's got him lined up, perfectly perpendicular, whatever that means, driving his weight right on top of his head. Tremendous win by Bob Orton. You see this technique, the way he uses that long body to get that arm drag in. And Orton continued the assault on Eaton. Look at this. Oh, did he catch him with that knee, Terry? Yeah, he does everything well. He's not a big guy, but he's very impressive, and he's very, very successful. And ladies and gentlemen, stay with us. Coming up after this break, the tournament drawings to determine the first ever American Wrestling Federation heavyweight champion. Tournament! You betcha. Tournament. Stay with us. It's coming. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back with me, the president of the American Wrestling Federation, Mr. Paul Alperstein. Paul, last week you made the big announcement. There will be a single elimination, 16-man tournament to determine the first ever American Wrestling Federation champion. And by the way, compliments a very impressive world championship belt for the AWF. But Paul, 
what was the criteria for getting your name into this all-important hopper? Well, I took a look at all the wrestlers around the world and contacted the top 50 and see if they would agree to sign a contract to wrestle in the tournament. They did so, and today we're going to draw the top 16 who come out of here. Now, just to make sure that I and everyone at home is clear, the ground rules are the first name drawn will then wrestle the second name drawn, the third name out will wrestle the fourth name, right on down to the 15th name will then wrestle the final and 16th entrant, correct? That's how it's going to be done, Ken. Well, certainly the first of many historic days to come in the American Wrestling Federation. So, Paul, if you would do the honors without further ado, let's draw the first name. And the first name is... The Mighty Hercules, managed by Sheik Adnan El Casey. And Paul, his opponent, none other than the great Mexican star, Tito Santana. And what a great first round matchup that one should be. In the next bracket, Hurricane Smith from Chicago, Illinois. And Hurricane's opponent, oh, talk about a battle of big men from the island of Samoa, Superfly. In the next bracket, we have Luscious Tommy Rich, managed by Rico Suave. And his opponent, look at this, his former tag team partner, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas. In the next matchup, we have America's hero, Sergeant Slaughter. And Sarge's opponent, the Masked Man, the Ultimate Destroyer. Paul, four great matchups, main events anywhere, and most important, they'll all be on television starting right here next week on the American Wrestling Federation. I think the fans are really going to enjoy this tournament, Ken. To our next match, we have Coco Beware, the Birdman. Oh, Paul, this has to be the most unluckiest draw. The Birdman's opponent, the meanest, the most fine man in the AWF, Nails. Yes, Ken, his fines have been paid, but his actions will not be tolerated in the tournament. In our next match, we have Johnny Gunn. Certainly the most popular AWF wrestler with the ladies. His opponent, oh, Paul, this is going to be gun strength against the crafty veteran managed by Sir Oliver Humperdinck, Cowboy Bob Orton Jr. And in our next match, we have the very powerful Warlord. And his opponent, oh, it's going to be the Warlord's brute strength against scientific excellence. His opponent from England, gentleman Chris Adams. And in our final matchup of the tournament, the very popular Jimmy Powers. And Jimmy Powers, Paul's going to need all his scientific knowledge because his opponent, yet another member of the family of Rico Suave, the crafty veteran, none other than Greg the Hammer Valentine. Ladies and gentlemen, there you see the 16 men in the single elimination tournament who will be battling it out. Paul Alperstein, you've got a tremendous championship belt. And what a lineup to become the first ever champion of the American Wrestling Federation. The greatest names in all of professional wrestling will be vying for this belt. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Why in the name of his mighty Allah, the name of my man is not in the tournament. The man's name's not in the tournament because it's not in the box. What? Why not in the box? Because you didn't pay your fine. We will pay for the fine. Okay, if you pay your fine, your man, Mr. Hughes, will be the first alternate into the tournament. What is the alternate? An alternate is real simple. Should for any reason no man be able to wrestle out of the 16 that are entered, then your man will have the opportunity to take his spot. Well, we'll see about that, and it must be sooner. I don't know, Paul. I, I don't like the sound of it. The Sheik absolutely can't be trusted. Yes, I'm not very comfortable. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back, and what an incident with Mr. Hughes knocking over the table, almost punching the president. He was not a happy camper. He stormed out of there like he wanted to hurt somebody. Yeah, I don't blame him for wanting to whack Zapperstein, but kicking the table over, I mean, he isn't in the tournament. But at least he got the break. He was going to be the alternate. Well, that is a break. Apparently, the fine is paid, and he is at least an alternate in the tournament. But this man, one of the 16 participants, all seven foot one inch of Hurricane Smith. Yeah, he's a big guy. Cody Hunter's not in the tournament, but boy, what a feather. Wait a second. Wait, who is this? Here? Well, we know who it is. The Sheik and Mr. Hughes, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what this is all about. Who are they motioning to? 
Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This kid's not even in the tournament. Why is he talking to him? To Let's listen to him. You understand English? Yes. I'm going to offer you some offer, some money. You don't have to wrestle the rest of your life. This man is too big. You understand what I'm saying to you? Let yes. my man take care of it. I'm going to give you some money. Take a look at this money here. That money is all your money. You don't have to work the rest of your life. Do you understand? Yes. You got it, my yes. man? Okay, let me shake your hand. Shut up. Cody Hunter's place. Look at the double cross. The Sheik took the money back after the deal was done. That is so typical of the Sheik, and Mr. Hughes has bought his way into this match with Hurricane Smith. And right now, the bad man from Kansas City is unloading on the Hurricane. Yeah, Hurricane is in that in the tournament, but he's getting beat up pretty bad here by Hughes, and everybody in the building hates it except the Sheik. Sidewalk slam that fast. Out of one. here unless he just wanted to make some kind of a statement to the American Wrestling Federation. I don't get it. Okay, so he beats this guy. This isn't part of the tournament. He's not even in the tournament. Now what's the Sheik doing with Gary Gronke, the referee? Wait a minute. Oh, I don't like the now looks of I this, don't. Terry. I do not like this at all. Come on, referee. Do something. The Sheik has referee took him out and Hughes off the top. He oh. drove a knee into the side of his head. This is what he's trying to do. He won the match. Sheik takes the referee away. Now Hughes is trying to hurt the guy so he can't be in the tournament. It all makes sense now. It certainly is playing out that way right now. Mr. Hughes in that alternate position. Uh, President Paul Appelstein made it clear. If a man is injured, can't participate. Hughes is the number one alternate, and that's why he's trying to take out Hurricane Smith. Yeah, but I don't think that Alperstein wanted him to hurt the guy, but oh, he opened the door up for that. And he's really going to have to look at this Alperstein because now Hughes still isn't done. The big man has no idea where he is, and I'm talking about Hurricane. Oh, now sidewalk slam on the ground, on the cement floor. Come on, where are the officials? Unbelievable, the turn of events here. Sheik is keeping the referee. Her oh, man, Hurricane is hurt bad. Well, come on, Brian. This is disgusting. Around. He's continuing to stop on Hurricane Smith outside the ring. Oh, look at this. You see it right there. Let's go back on the instant replay. That right knee oh. into the head, that would have ended any normal man's career, let alone anything else. Right there, sidewalk slam. It gives him the victory, but still doesn't get him into the tournament. He takes matters into his own hands, goes in there, takes the big man, knee off the top, and then he also does that sidewalk slam out on the floor. Tremendous turn of events. How devious is the Sheik? Oh, watch this. Uh, on the concrete, 400 pounds being lifted by 360. Oh, my. Well, there's no question about it. Mr. Hughes knew he had to go the extra mile if he was going to take Hurricane out of that tournament, and he has done exactly that. We're going back to the ring, ladies and gentlemen, and the Sheik and Mr. Hughes parading around, very proud of themselves. Hurricane Smith still on the outside of the ring. Oh, put that money away. This is disgusting. Yeah, he thinks money can buy anything. Uh, He's got to be proud of himself, Indy Car. He took a man out that was 401 pounds. Uh-oh. You hate to see this in any sporting endeavor. A guy being carried out. And look at him fixing his tie. He's so proud of himself. Yeah, I think Alperstein should throw him off the planet. Don't put him in the tournament. I am in complete agreement with you, Terry. No place for actions like this in professional wrestling. And Terry, where are you going? My broadcast partner, Terry Taylor, has left the table. And there you see Mr. Hughes and Sheik Adnan LKC, two of the most despicable men in professional wrestling. And Hurricane Smith, this man was on top of the world just a few minutes ago. He was seated in the top 16 part of the American Wrestling Federation Championship Tournament. And now we take a look at him being carried from the building on a stretcher. I do not like the looks of this. The Sheik and Mr. Hughes have pulled a fast one on the American Wrestling Federation. Stay with us, everybody. This is Mick Karch. We're coming back with more great wrestling action. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we're back and we're joined by our broadcast colleague, Ken Resnick. Ken, you were in the back. What's the condition of Hurricane Smith? Hurricane Smith, Mick, I think has two major problems. When Mr. Hughes came off the top rope, the knee to the side of the head, he's got that classic dazed look, some kind of concussion, be it mild or severe. But most importantly, when Hughes sidewalk slammed him on the concrete, his left side, I guarantee he's got one, if not two or three, either crack or fractured ribs. I don't see any way he'll be ready for next week. President Paul Alperstein, not knowing the sheik like you or I, unwittingly opened the door for him. You've made the right choice with the American Wrestling Federation. So until next week, you're dismissed.